Hey everybody, this is GGB. I screwed up last week. I got literally one of the worst weeks I've ever had. I think I got like one and a half points. That is just absolutely atrocious. That couldn't have been worse. The only reason I got any points was because there were just some days with no upsets. Oh my god. We actually did have an upset yesterday. I guessed wrong, but it, it doesn't really matter. I was already not going to hit my goal. I just decided to take a risk. And you know what? It did not pay off. But, you know, it's okay. Uh, Ohio State was actually upset by Maryland. in a pretty surprising upset. Didn't exactly see it coming. But, you know, there's, there's something interesting about Maryland. Maryland might not be the best basketball team this year. But they've now climbed up to the 11 seed instead of being the 12 seed. And remember, only one game back from Penn State. They have beaten Penn State, and Penn State has a rough schedule ahead of them, and Penn State had a chance to have a two-game lead if they had beaten Nebraska. Unfortunately, they got absolutely walloped by the worst team in the conference last night. Just embarrassing for the Nittany Lions. Um, but they have a rough schedule ahead of them. They get Illinois at home, uh, actually Illinois on the road, I believe, and then Rutgers also on the road. And that's, that's a rough way to end the year. And, I mean, if you can't beat Nebraska on your home court, I find it very, very difficult to believe that you somehow will pull off beating Illinois or Rutgers on the road. Rutgers is a more of a possibility, but Illinois is a team that is vi legitimately vying for a Big Ten title this year in the regular season. On the other hand, Illinois, Ohio State with a loss, they fell to 11-6 and six in conference. One game ahead of Iowa. And if you're looking at it for Iowa, if you're uh, Iowa, you're going to be watching these last two Ohio three last three Ohio State games with a lot of interest. They have a game at home against Nebraska on Tuesday, a game at home against Michigan State on Thursday, and then a game at home against Michigan on Sunday. And you're going to be hoping for an upset in one of those one of those three games down the stretch. If you are a if you're an Iowa fan, and you if you get that. I don't know if you – you don't win the tiebreak because you're really hoping for two. You're hoping for Michigan and Michigan State both to upset Ohio State. Although with if Ohio State loses, they could fall to 18-9. and nine. If you win, you fall to 21 – you move to 21-8. and eight. I feel like it's a better record, actually. Um, I think Iowa does have the tiebreaker. So you're really just hoping – you're a big Michigan State supporter or a big Michigan supporter, depending on which week. They're playing. I, you're also a big Nebraska supporter, but the chances of that happening are unlikely. Um, but yeah, Ohio State loses a game. This gets Iowa and Michigan State both right back in this race for that four seed. And remember how important that four seed is down the stretch. It really is huge because if you're a four seed, you get a double buy, unlike everyone else. And double buys are so hugely important. It it really is a Great place to be if you are a Iowa. If you're an Iowa fan, if I'm an Ohio State fan, I'd be starting to worry about losing that four spot. Um, but moving on to today's game at seven o'clock in Northwestern, which is at thirteen and fourteen. Travel to number twenty-five, Iowa, which is at twenty and eight. Just talking about Iowa. Iowa favored by ten and a half points on the Big Ten Network. And number one, if you're an Iowa fan, obviously rooting for you to win this game. But if you're a Michigan State fan, obviously rooting for the opposite. If Iowa loses this game, you they fall to 10-8. and eight, um, And you move back into the fifth place spot behind Ohio State. Suddenly, you are the team that is contention, in contention for passing the Buckeyes and getting that double bye. And after a three-game losing streak they just ended this weekend, this would be so nice for a Spartans team um, that is that has maybe national championship hopes and this is this is this is an interesting game to watch if you're a spartan fan on the other hand um oh also wait if i will lose this game they fall to 10 and 8 drop below michigan state and enter a tie with rutgers now iowa has a tiebreaker having a 29 record and rutgers having a 10 and, and a 10, 16 and 12 record but regardless um I, rutgers would be happy with an iowa loss P who wouldn't be happy with an iowa Iowa lost um, Maryland, Maryland and Penn State, both of them really um, real big supporters of Iowa tomorrow. If you're a Penn State fan like I am, I am very, very worried. And any team that is below Penn State, I would love to keep losing. I'm really upset that Maryland won against Ohio State yesterday. 
Northwestern needs to keep losing if you're a Penn State fan. You could not see Northwestern lose enough because Maryland and Northwestern are only one game back on Penn State. Northwestern with a win would move to 7-12 and 12 in conference past Maryland for the 11 seed and would only be half a game back or a game in the loss column, if you want to think about it that way, behind Penn State. And Penn State has a rough schedule in front of them. I'm worried. I'm worried about the Nittany Lions losing that 10 spot and how important that 10 spot is, even considering Penn State lost horribly to Nebraska at home. So who knows what could happen on a neutral court. This is not something you want if you're Penn State. You would love a Northwestern loss here. That's what you're rooting for. Same Terrapins and Nittany Lions are on the exact same page on this game, too. Um, big Iowa supporters for tonight. Anyway, that's what's going on in the Big Ten. Uh, at eight, Moving on to the Big 12. At 8 o'clock, we have Kansas State, which is at 14 and 14. Travel number 9, Texas Tech, which is at 22 and 7. Texas Tech favor 12 and a half points on ESPN2. And at 8 o'clock, we have number 10, Baylor, which is at 24 and 5. China number 20, Texas, which is at... 21 and 8. Baylor favored by one point on ESPN. Let's talk about Baylor for a second. Baylor is in, they're in a great position. A great, great position. With a win here, can move to 13 and 4. Now remember, this is only temporary, but 13 and 4. I mean, 13 out of 17 basketball games is a 76% winning percentage. Kansas sits at 12 and 3, which is 12 out of 15, which is. An 80% win percentage. But remember, Kansas has three games left to play. Baylor has two. If Baylor wins those final two games, they can move to 14-4. And, and you're just hoping, if you're a Baylor fan, Kansas loses one of those games. Because you have the tiebreaker over Kansas. That's what you're rooting for. You're rooting for TCU to beat them one of those two times. Or Texas to pull off the upset that last time. So Baylor, if they move to win this game they're still in second place. But you're putting yourselves in a position to possibly win the Big 12 if you're Baylor. With a win here today. With a loss here today for Baylor and a Texas Tech victory, um, Baylor would still have the tiebreaker because they would have a 24-6 and six record. Texas would have a 23-7 and seven record. One game better, and that is helping Baylor a lot here. Baylor would be the two-team, but it would be very close with Texas Tech. Now, here's what you're rooting for if you're tech, if Texas. If Texas beats Baylor, they fall to 12-5. and five. And if Texas wins, obviously they'll move to 11-6. and six. And if Texas Tech loses against Kansas State, Texas Tech would fall to 11-6 and six as well. It would go down to a tiebreaker, which wouldn't be the overall record because they would have the exact same overall record. But Texas Tech swept Texas in the regular season, so they would have the tiebreaker in that respect. But if you're Texas, you're putting yourselves in a position possibly where you could possibly get the number two seed in the Big 12 um, you're only one game. It, Texas Tech has the tiebreaker, so you need them to lose another game, but you would be only be one game behind Baylor. Um, they also have the tiebreakers. That's unfortunate for you if you're Texas, but you would, you would be a chance. You, you at least have an opportunity to possibly get the two seed if you're Texas, if you win this game tonight. On the other hand, if Texas loses this basketball tonight, they fall to 10 and seven. I don't think they're in that much jeopardy of TCU passing them, but you never know. Um, if you crumble down the stretch, you could be, possibly be 10 and 8, and maybe TCU wins their last three games and gets to 10 and 8. Seems unlikely considering they have to play Kansas twice, one on the road, but you know, anything's possible. Um, Kansas State has a chance to do something here today. Um, Kansas State has lost three straight, kind of heartbreaking ones too. Kansas State lost barely to Iowa State, lost by one point to Iowa State yesterday. Uh, on Saturday, they got blown out by Kansas during the week. And then on Saturday, they lost a heartbreaker overtime game to Oklahoma State. So, I mean, this has been two out of the last three games have been kind of heartbreaking loss if you're Wildcats fans. But if you win this game, if you're Kansas State, you don't move anywhere, but you put yourself only half a game behind Iowa State. And you can just root for Iowa State to lose to Oklahoma State on Wednesday. And they have a game against Baylor on Saturday. So, I mean... Kansas State, Kansas State's a good basketball team. They're going to be a tough outcome Big 12 tourney time. I find it really interesting, though. Uh, with a loss, you fall behind Oklahoma State. But again, not a big deal because Oklahoma State's ineligible for the Big 12 tourney. So not a huge deal if you're Kansas State. But what's the big deal is if you win this game, you can only be half a game behind Iowa State, which is important. And only about a full game. But, well, no, um, only two games in the loss column behind 
TCU. So, I mean, this is an important game. If you're a Wildcat, try... Your goal right now, if you're a Kansas State Wildcat fan, is get to the five spot. You obviously can't pass Texas, but if you win your last couple games, which, I, granted, are going to be tough basketball games to win. You play Texas Tech tomorrow, uh, today, and then you play Oklahoma on Saturday. That might not be the toughest game in the world to win, but if you're Kansas State, this is a game you can't... You need to crawl. You need to get to the five seed. If I'm Kansas State, that's the goal. You need some help, obviously, from teams to beat Iowa State and TCU. But that's the goal if you're a Wildcats fan. You're obviously probably, you're definitely not going to pass Texas. But you still have the hope of passing TCU and Iowa State. That's what I'd be looking for. And then finally, at 10 o'clock, we have the Pac-12 game, number 12, UCLA, which is at 21 and 6. Traveling to Washington, which is at 14 and 13. UCLA fair with 10 and a half points on ESPN2. UCLA, with a win, can move to 14-5, and five, half a game behind USC or one game in the loss column behind USC. UCLA kind of doesn't need to worry all that much about Oregon. They are, they're likely going to be the three seed unless they beat USC in that final game. But even if they lose their last two games, or, well, actually, theoretically speaking, if UCLA drops both their games and Oregon picks up their two final two games, which are against wa the Washington teams, um... You could end up seeing a uh, Pac, Pac uh, UCLA pass, although that would both put them at thirteen and seven. That would go to tiebreaker. Then uh, no, no, no. It would still be it would still be UCLA, but it'd be very close on the tiebreaker. By the way, um, the tiebreaker would still rule UCLA this way. So UCLA, it's going to be the three seed uh, at the very least. You have a chance to get the two seed from USC though. If you can keep winning and USC loses down the stretch, again, with a win, only half a game behind USC. So big games coming up for UCLA, and especially they have a chance to, they they own their, they have their own destiny in their hands of being the two seed because you play USC next Saturday. It's obviously going to be a huge basketball game. It's likely going to determine who's the number two team in the big Pac-12 tourney. So obviously a hugely significant game there. Washington, on the other hand, desperately needs a win. I saw somewhere some guy saying that Washington's a playoff team. That is a massive stretch of the imagination. Same thing goes for Washington State and Stanford, by the way. They're not bat playoff basketball teams unless they go on a run and win the Pac-12 tourney. I'm not, not discrediting that. They can. Um, the argument I'd be making is for Colorado. Colorado's 19-10 basketball team. It's on the fringe, in my opinion. But they picked up a big win against Arizona. I think the Buffs have enough of a resume. I think they should make the tourney. Um, but that's just me. Uh, at the very least, you, I, I think I'd take Colorado over Oregon, if I'm going to be honest. I understand Oregon has a lot of quality wins on their resume. But they also have a, some unquality losses. Now, so does Colorado. Obviously, have a loss to Arizona State on there. But uh, Colorado's, I think, a better basketball team. I think they're peaking much more than Oregon is right now. Anyways, uh, Washington with the win can move to 10-8 and eight conference. Now, while it wouldn't be as good as Colorado's 11-8, and eight, but only one game back in the win column, which would be a win if you're a Huskies fan. You lose this game for Washington, you could fall to 9-9. Nine and nine. Washington State plays Oregon State. They had... So they would also move to eight, nine, and nine. And based on overall record, Washington State would pass you for the sixth seed, which isn't isn't what you want. If you're the Huskies, you would fall to the seventh seed. Luckily, I don't think Stanford has a huge chance of passing you, but you you never know. Um, so this is a big game for the Huskies. They they gotta win it, but also I don't think they have a legitimate chance. I mean, like this is a game that you you would love to win if you're a Huskies fan. Uh, but you're probably not expecting, you're probably expecting Washington State to pass you tonight. So who do I think is going to pull off the upset? I'm going to go safe again. Um, everyone is double-digit underdogs except for this team, so I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Texas. I think Texas is a really good basketball team. I understand Baylor is probably going to be a top, probably seven, five basketball team. But you need, if you're Texas... I, Texas is a really good team, too. I think they're going to pull it off. Hey, everybody, this is GGP saying adios, amigos, and go Longhorns.